Hey gang, it's Johnny. I just want to take a second to talk to you guys about engagement. Right now you're listening to the show and I'm not sure exactly what platform you're listening to it on. But whatever platform you're listening to it on, you, you can subscribe to it and get an alert every time a new show drops, usually every Tuesday and every Friday. New shows every Tuesday and every Friday. Whatever platform you're listening on, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, Overcast, Stitcher, any platform, you can subscribe to it. And if you can leave a comment, leave a star, share it on your social media if it's something that you like, please do that. We encourage you to do that. And also, as far as social media goes, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I am at Johnny Gowdy on Instagram and Twitter. Give us a follow. You can see photos even of my dog, of guests on the show of different shows I play, whatever it is that I'm talking about that I've been doing on the show, you'll be able to catch up on through Instagram and Twitter. Also, you can like our Facebook page. How did I get here? Please do. You'll see photos of me with uh, with guests that have been on the show. Anyway, all I want to say is you like a show, share it, use the hashtag. How did I get here? Pod we will give you a shout out. Thank you so much for listening to the show and engage. Let's get down. Attention musicians of all levels. It's not always easy picking out a song by ear. Sometimes you need a little help. Well, I have the app for you. Whether you're a professional musician or a beginner, Ultimate Guitar is an amazing app. For just $2.99, you get the chords and tabs on guitar, bass, or ukulele for over a million songs. They're all available at your fingertips. You also get tools like a tuner, metronome, chord library, lessons, videos, and more. You can find out any song you want. You also has like transpose button. It has auto scroll that you can change the speed to so you can play along with the song. A lot of the songs have the lyrics there so you can sing along with them. Ultimate Guitar is an amazing app. Just go to ultimateguitar.com or download the app to your phone today and start playing. Start playing any song you want. Ultimate Guitar, that's the place for you. Let's get down. Johnny, I'm your host. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys are all having a good week, whatever it is you do during the week. If you're here in Austin enjoying South by Southwest, hope you've been enjoying it. I've been enjoying it until I woke up today. Uh, I'm doing this on Thursday. I woke up today with kind of a weird lump in my throat and kind of a rasp in my voice that I don't really understand. Not sure if it's uh, from talking too much. Don't know if it's allergies. Not sure if it's something weird like uh, like strep. It does have a weird thing. I don't have a weird taste in my mouth. There's something weird going on. I'm trying to make an appointment uh, so I can go get it checked out so I can make sure I'm cool. I don't want to be infected with something and go out and infect other people. Anyway, I hope you're having a great time at South by Southwest. I've seen a lot of good music, gotten to be on a couple of panels, gotten to see a lot of old friends I haven't seen in years. So many. Got to be on this uh, Austin Music Foundation and TuneCore panel on Tuesday. That was a lot of fun. My friends Anar and Jenny and Kate talking about uh, 20 years of Austin Music Foundation, five years of the artist development program and all that we've been able to do, which has been pretty exciting. And then one of our artists got up and played a stripped down scent, Quentin Arispe, Quentin in the past lives. I know you've heard him on the show. Anyway, I hope you guys keep on enjoying South by Southwest. There's still a few days left, man. If I uh, if I'm if I'm OK, if I check out OK, I'm going to a lot of stuff on Friday. And uh, and definitely Friday night and Saturday night as well. So uh, maybe I'll see you out there if you're out there. Gang, I have a great show for you guys today. Johnny and Carly Wolf, known as the Ghost Wolves, return to the show today. They have a brand new album. Their third album, Never Die, drops on June 3rd. But they have a couple singles out and videos and stuff uh, for the songs Devil's Vine and End of It All. These are singles that are out now. You can get out there and see the Ghost Wolves at theghostwolves.com. It was great catching up with Johnny and Carly. They've spent uh, a lot of time writing music retooling their sound you'll notice these songs sound a little bit different than than past ghost wolf records which is what you want your your favorite bands to do is evolve always great catching up with those guys they are actually playing live this sunday uh sunday march 20th at 2 p.m at alejandro's south by southwest party at the continental club they'll be playing at 2 p.m lots of great bands on that bill they'll also be playing sunday march 27th at 6 p.m at the spider house ballroom now listen gang uh 
they are doing something special with their merch sales. They've joined Bands Band Together. And that is a group from the Ukraine started by a friend of theirs that was in a band that is helping refugees get out of Ukraine during this horrible, horrible time. So I will put a link in the uh, in the podcast to the, the Bands Band Together part of their website so that you can go there and donate some money or buy some merch and they'll donate some money. I think it's a good amount of money. I think they're giving like $5 per purchase. So get out there. Let's help out people in the Ukraine and let's help out Johnny and Carly Wolf. They're making great music. We have a great, great time catching up over Zoom over what's been going on for the last couple of years with them and what they think the, that 2022 holds for them. So without further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Johnny and Carly Wolf. The Ghost Wolves. Let's get down. job plus you have like a rock star stance when you're you can do like <laughs> yeah. yeah just need a monitor to put your foot on while you're leaning into it leaning into it how are you guys doing pretty good pretty yeah. good yeah uh, are you guys have you guys gotten back to playing shows i mean i know you're doing like the alejandro thing and and a thing at spider house but have you been playing like during 2021 and stuff See. We had our first one um, last Friday at ABGB. Yeah, first one of 22 was last Friday. And then we played like maybe two shows in 21 or okay. three. I think it was three shows in the whole year. Uh, so not really, not that much. What got you out to do those shows? Like what like numbers were down and like... Yeah, um... Well, there was like a break in the surge, you know, where it was like, felt like we were kind of in the clear before Omicron. Or before Delta. <laughs> oh, no. Sorry, before oh, Delta. Oh, yeah. That, right. that sweet, <laughs> like everyone's getting vaccinated. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I did a show yeah. at 310 during that time. That was great. Yeah. Was it like yeah. summer, July yeah. of 21? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's a, yeah. Yeah. We played a super crowded show at um, Hotel Vegas, and it was just so crazy people were in our faces and everyone was spitting on each other sharing the microphone you know <laughs> yelling in each other's face and just <laughs> it was crazy did you guys manage to stay did you guys ever get it the covid no well not that we know of okay. but when we when it we were in italy on tour when it first started over there oh you were and when we got yeah and when we got back we were super sick so but we at that point you couldn't test for it. You, right. you know, it's so new. So we don't know, but we were both really sick and coughing and, you know, he coughed for like, I don't know, like a month. Right. Yeah. I had a, yeah, it was like, like it. 26 days. Yeah. yeah. I think we did, but it was just so early. It's so weird. I have, I have friends that were over there on tour and like in January and February of 2020. And mm -hmm. there's always like, Oh, but this one guy got, just got really sick for like three weeks and you're like, Oh, but that guy had it. Yeah. Yeah. I, been. We probably, I mean the amount that we were traveling and talking to people every night and close quarters, everything. And, I think, in Italy specifically. Yeah. Specifically in Italy where it was all starting. Well, not starting, but starting in Europe. That was like the uh, first like real ugly scene was in Italy. Right. It was yeah. ugly. Yeah. And yeah. we were, man, we were watching it on the TV in the hotel and trying to translate what we could. And, you know, they had the people in the hazmat suits on the on the nightly news. And uh, it was just really eerie being there. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but it was fucking scary. <laughs> it I was imagine, scary, yeah. I imagine being there was, did, I, so you made it out? How long were you there? Barely, yeah. Yeah, barely. Yeah. I we mean, were there like two weeks Two weeks and the last gig, we just decided to get into the car right after we were done playing instead of stay the night because we heard that they were closing the borders. So we thought, OK, we need to drive overnight and get out of this country so we can catch our plane because our plane was leaving from France. We were like, if we don't go, they're going to close us in here. Yeah, we got spooked, you know. 
It's like out of a pandemic in movie. Uh, yeah, it's like a zombie <laughs> thing. <laughs> like the zombies are coming. But yeah, on the way, driving from our last gig through Italy to the border, uh, there were they closed off like a lot of the exits. You couldn't stop. You couldn't even get off the highway. You couldn't get gas. Like everybody was just shutting down. Especially around Milan. When we were passing by Milan, you just couldn't get off the highway. Huh. It's just totally shut down. So, you know, did you guys notice that Spotify kicked you off today? Spotify, what? Spotify, Spotify kicked everyone off and you can't get on log up, log back on. And I Today? Was, yeah, and you know, the, my first thought was like, that's Russian fucking internet terrorism. They it went could to Spotify be. and took away our Joe Rogans. <laughs> <laughs> Hitting us where it hurts, you know? Yeah. Wow. What? Isn't that weird? Yeah. That is weird. I haven't looked. I looked it up on it's... Twitter right before I got on with you guys because I, I thought it was me. Yeah. And it's everybody? It's Crazy. the world. Yeah. Maybe they're getting us where it, where it matters, they man. They locked us out. I mean, there's a lot of information being disseminated on there right now. It would make sense, wouldn't it? Yeah. To uh, hit us in the, the podcasts. Get yeah. us right in the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you guys, this is going to come out next Friday, but you guys are actually playing a show on that Sunday, March 20th, the Alejandro Escovedo South by Southwest Continental Club party at 2 p.m. You know who else is on that show outside of Alejandro? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, Lenny K. Whoa. Who, yeah, Lenny freaking K. Uh, let's see. Who Kevin else? Kenny. Kevin Kenny from Driving and Crying. He's wow. just one of our absolute favorite He's songwriters awesome. on the planet. Um, uh, Otis the Destroyer is a local. Yeah. Eve, Eve Monsey. Yeah, Eve Monsey's um, Alejandro's playing. And then there's always like some random badass that shows up at that. At that. We played that party a couple of times, and it's just like – a nexus for badass rock and rollers. He always has the the coolest friends who are in town from wherever, you know, and so they come by and it's he, fun. Yeah. He's he's like one of the coolest cats there is. You guys have done shows with him, right? Yeah. Yeah, we toured with him. He oh. claims that he discovered us. Yeah, we were discovered. <laughs> <laughs> because um when we first started our band, we were playing at a place called the Ghost Room. You remember that place? I remember the name. I don't remember. I don't remember it for some reason. Yeah, it wasn't very sh- long there, but uh, he he wandered in there one night when we were playing and saw us and asked the sound person like, "Hey, you know who is this?" and and they said, and then he got in touch with us a little while later, like, "Hey, guys." You know, why don't you come and play with me? And we were like, what? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. And then he asked us to go on tour with him. Yeah. So we went on tour with him um, twice that year. That's awesome. And um, He changed our lives, honestly. No, he really did. Because yep. then us ha- ha- playing his Continental show there um, for South By, we got some connections to Europe. And then we were able to go tour Europe. And that's kind of where we got our start over there. Yeah. Are you guys thinking of, I mean, you've got, first of all, congratulations uh, on your new music and videos and stuff. And even Thank since you've last been on that, the video for Devil's Vine is out now. People can check it out. It's it's really awesome. And the song is really awesome. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. Um, that was a fun one. Fun, fun to work on that. Yeah. You guys, you guys record there, right? At your house, wherever it is that you are? Or? Yeah, we have a studio. Um at our house right now. And then also we record with John Michael chef from night glitter. Yeah. If you're familiar. Yeah. Cool he's dude. got a really great, cool dude, old friend, and he's got a tape studio in his house. So we're just kind of working in house studios right now. What um, kind of yeah, tape? We have a tape? Sorry. Uh, we are on a quarter inch, um, tape Tascam 388 eight at our track. house. Yeah, track. baby. Did we yeah, talk man. about this before? <laughs> I, I don't think, think so. we that's, had that's it, That's my favorite recording machine. The Tascam 3D is my all-time no favorite. Way. Yeah, I used to have one. We and love you know what's it. funny? Ah. I sold it in like 2003 because the channels started going out and I could see mm. that tape was really starting to be hard to get. And mm. so I, I sold it. And then like three years ago, I went to Threadgills to play a gig and the bartender guy there is like, hey, Johnny, how's it going? I'm like, how do I know you, dude? He's like, oh, man, years ago I bought your Tascam 388. And I was like, can I have it back? <laughs> do you still have it? And he's like, yeah. 
So I bought it back for like, he no was like way. I'll, yeah, I'll sell it. I'll sell it to you for 150 bucks. And no I bought way. it, and it was it was in disastrous shape. Really? It just yeah, it it just sat in a shed for years. Oh That's man, That's crazy. Yeah. Did you get it fixed up? I, I, I turned around and, and, uh, gave it to a friend of mine who, uh, who has another one for parts. Ah, uh, like cool. this, okay. this probably doesn't work, yeah. but you can probably, if you ever need like a roller or some kind of shit, you can get it from this thing. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Well, there's a, there's a couple Great guys machine. in town that work on them. And, um, when we bought ours, they, Gave it a once over, fixed up, you know, little things that needed it to be done. It wasn't that bad off, but um, a couple guys there in town will get it, anything working. How much do you love working? Isn't that thing cool? It is so fun. It. Yeah, it's so wonderful to work in a studio without a computer screen and just yeah. be tactile. Yes. And, and the, yeah, and the tape is really, I mean, we're learning. Uh, we're Carly's more experienced as an engineer, but I am not. So I've been definitely like, learning trial by fire, you know, making big mistakes and deleting things that I shouldn't have. And, um, but it's really, man, drums sound really good on that thing. Yeah, yeah. they do. Really good. They do. Now yeah. we, it, we do have our limitations with it and we're, we're thinking about trying to expand from there so we can export all eight tracks individually yeah. into the computer for mixing purposes, because right now as it is, you know, you can't, recall a mix right. if you want to just you know do one little thing you've got to start from scratch all over again right and that can be tricky like working with like a licensing person where they're like oh yeah that's great but can you just do this little tweak and we're like actually uh, we can't no we can't <laughs> <laughs> but isn't there, isn't there fact, part no. of you that's kind of proud of yourselves for being like sorry we can't we committed to the tape and that's what it is <laughs> yeah, but then there's the part that wants the paycheck. Of course, of course. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. There's One like the artistic needs. side. <laughs> yeah, um, we we just did a thing with Jim Eno at his studio. He's yeah. doing a project right now, um, Project Traction, and we were in there, and he was he said something about like working on tape is like reenacting the Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're like, yeah, actually, it is. It's like, why do you do that? <laughs> there's why would you do that? Why would you, you do that? There's something romantic to. about it. It is. It really is. Yeah, it takes you back. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. But I'll working with him in his studio was amazing, too. That's like a whole different... That's like going off onto a spaceship or something. Are you guys... Did you guys just did one song with him? Or are you going to do more stuff there? We hope we to do more. To. Yeah, we hope to do more. But we just did one. Um, he's doing project. a project. It's Project Traction. And he's bringing in um, female and non-binary uh, record producers. So yeah. he's getting girls into the studio, basically. I because saw there's not enough in the business. And um, and then, yeah, so they brought us in. So, so Carly, you're, you're out of the two of you guys. You're the engineer. Well, I studied engineering at, in college at Texas State University, and um, but nothing about tape. It was all digital. You know, they were teaching the newest, latest technology, and you know, the tape is dead. You know, according to them. So I did. Is that what they say lot, when they're teaching? They say just dead. I mean, it is dead. Oh but... yeah. Oh yeah. No, they wouldn't even <laughs> talk about it. They're like, oh, uh, we're not even. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, they there was literally a class where we were encoding and decoding, you know, ones and zeros digitally for I don't even know why or what we were doing really, but it was just like not useful. <laughs> right. You know the, <laughs> not, the, you know the main thing is uh not waiting for the rewind. That's the best of the best part of the, the, the transition from analog to digital is that. Yeah. Well, our, uh, our 388 has a really fast rewind on it. Actually, yeah. we were, got a compliment on that. And it has, a, zero. it has a couple, it has a couple of, of location spots too, doesn't it? If I'm not wrong. Mm, if it does, I don't know about it. <laughs> Um, yeah, the using this tape machine, it's like a new frontier for both of us. So it's like it's really fun. So when did you get it? Did you you did you did these songs, the uh, the Devil's Vine and End of It All on there? Those were on John Mike's two track or okay. uh, two inch 
uh, his which is also a task cam. The no, he didn't have a two inch at the time. Oh, okay, it was it half was inch or something. Okay, well, it was on John Mike's also a task cam rig. Yeah, he's house. he's the task cam man, and he has he's been steadily increasing tape size over at his house. Now he has a two inch. We haven't been there studio. since he's done that, but we want to go back. He's next next level. We're just level. <laughs> yeah he's really expanding over there with awesome vintage gear do you, it's really but it's cool. cool what kind of What's gear that? do you guys do you guys have any do you guys go and borrow a bunch of stuff and like yeah yeah we we don't have a ton of outboard gear uh just a couple of digital delays some boss stuff um one compressor and we don't really even use that no um, we don't but when we mixed our record john michael came over with a rack of stuff and helped us mix it here with some additional gear that he brought. And um, and he borrowed some of that stuff from like Charlie Sexton and some other people that he just knows a lot of folks. So he's always got people's gear at his house. Right. So he kind of like, maybe we weren't supposed to say that, but he like brought a bunch of stuff <laughs> over it's of secret. other people's. I mean, you know. in, in the world of, of stuff, there's, 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 uh, look, I have a piano, uh, I have a piano because of that kind of thing. Uh, I yeah. was looking to buy a piano like like 12 years ago or something. And I was riding in a car from a gig really late at night with my friend Kyle Crusham. And uh, don't worry, it's not too long. But he was Charlie's engineer. And so I sa- ah, okay. he said, what are you doing tomorrow? And I said, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to go to San Marcos and look at this 100-year-old piano. Mm. Uh, see about buying it. And he goes, dude, I think Charlie went to look at that piano today. Hang on a second. So he calls Charlie. Charlie says, "Uh, no, but he got another piano that day. And he said, I'll give you the piano I have now. And Kyle was like, that's awesome because the piano that I have now doesn't really fit in my place. And then he goes, hey, you want a piano? And I was like, yeah. And so there was like a three-way pass down. Like Charlie bought a new piano and two other dudes got new pianos because of it. That's Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I yeah. love that. So what kind of a piano is it? Mine's a Daewoo. You guys have seen it when it came out. It's, it's, it's like a it's, Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's like a the 90s piano. Korean piano. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Mm-hmm. We got into keys too last year. We we got a Farfisa. Yeah. That's yeah, we got a really good Devil's deal. Vine yeah, Devil's Vines on there. And then Carly got this. And End of It All, right? Uh, end of It All, too. Don't, don't you do the, the, end, the, of it the all. end of It? Yeah. There's like a chord up or something like that? Yeah, that's yeah. on the far. <laughs> yeah. That's the witches flying away. Yeah. <laughs> and then Carly got this really cool tube organ from the 50s um, from up in Dallas. And uh, that thing is awesome. Yeah, the Hammond. It's a Hammond, yeah. C6, I think. C6. It's called. Yeah. It's a chord organ. So like a church organ where you've got the chordal section and one like button yeah. presses. Yeah, not a church. I don't think it's well, church yeah, I think it was made for churches. No, well, it anyways. was made for people's homes because they were trying to sell it like anybody can play music. All you have to do is read this chart, and then every time you know, like press the chords over here, and then read the melody over here. It's like okay, yeah, yeah. not everyone can do that, but but it, they were really popular back then. <clears throat> That's awesome. awesome. It sounds amazing. It sounds great. And that's what I'm playing in the Devil's Vine video. Oh, yeah. Hey, who did that video? That video is great. Thank you. you we did, did it, it ourselves. Wow. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's that's what you guys have been doing. You've been holed up just like creating. Yes. Yeah, man. <laughs> what else can we do? <laughs> well, we've been lucky to have the time, you know. Yeah. When you're on the road, you can't do videos and write and record, so... So what what happens when you put out uh, Never Die, which comes out on June 3rd? That's your third actual full-length album. Yeah. Yes. Well, we have a ramp-up to it. So we, we just put out the two first singles. Right. Um, with, with the Devil's Vine video. Next week, we're releasing the End of It All video. Oh, really? And then, yeah. And so then um, in April, we're going to release two more singles off the record. And um, two more videos. And then in May, the same thing. So we're kind of ramping it up, putting some videos out there. Okay. And then in June, the whole thing will come out. But the other, th- let me tell you about the other thing we're doing, which is kind of cool. Okay. So we recorded 20 tracks, and that's too many to go into a vinyl. So what we're doing is, if anybody 
who pre-orders the vinyl, they get to listen to all 20 tracks on a stream, and then they get to choose their favorite 10 and email us and put in their vote. And then at the end of the month, we're going to tally together and see what the consensus is before we make the vinyl order. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, we're excited because we're getting some really cool feedback. And it was kind of hard for us to decide because, you know, over the course of two years uh, with our own home studio and working with John Michael, the songs vary greatly. They're different stylistically. They're different with instruments. And like they don't really all go together as an album normally would where you go and do it all at the same time. So it's kind of hard for us to decide what to put on there. And so we're, we're just decided to let, let them decide, let everyone help us decide. <laughs> That's great though. I mean, it's, it's exciting. It, yeah. It's, it's cool to be able to do something a little bit different that involves the fans, you know, totally. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, are you going to go out on the road again? Like, do you have plans now that it looks like things are. Yeah. Normalizing yeah. We're planning. Yeah, they're opening up. Um, we're working on Europe for the end of the year. Okay. That's the plan right now. People are um, like our our booker people. The bookers are just a little like hesitant to commit. Still, I think they've had so many cancellations that they want to push it out a ways. At least on on our side. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're just we're kind of just getting it. We have some personal stuff we're dealing with that we need to kind of be around for for a little while. So we're. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, but our our agent in Europe did um, reach out and say, hey, you know, what about this fall? And the timing for that, you know, is pretty good with the record coming out in the summer. And so we're going to shoot for that. But we miss it. I was thumbing through Instagram today, looking back at like all our tour photos and stuff and just being like, damn it, I miss that so much. Like I really miss traveling and playing. I hadn't until today. <laughs> today, I finally was like, crap, I missed doing that. I really need to go back out there. So Well, and then also, the, speaking of that, the reason why he was doing that is because we were looking for a picture of um, us with a band that we played with in Europe from Ukraine. And we're doing a campaign to help them. That's um, right. And yet, we wanted to talk to you about Please that. Please do. Too. Okay, so we were lucky to play with a band from Ukraine called Hypnotunes a couple years ago. And super fantastic dudes, just wonderful people, great band. And their lead singer right now, Gagera, is actually volunteering over there. He's in Ukraine and he is um, moving people to the border that need to get out of the country. And he's also buying supplies um, with a couple of other volunteers and they're running them to the troops like boots vests goggles whatever they need and so they're funding all that themselves right now all the fuel and housing housing people feeding people um really just brave brave dude and um so he actually posted today about reaching needing funds like they need help and that's what they need the most it's just money to buy gas and whatever it is that they're doing. Um, so we're doing a thing. It's called bands band together. And Carly came up with that. <laughs> it's a hashtag it's bands a hashtag. band together. And we're going to try to get as many bands um, involved as possible. And hopefully it'll start spreading, you know, and people can spread the word through their fans and their friends that are in different bands and um, just funnel the money to them to help them because we have a direct connection with somebody there. They they wanted us to come and play with them there. We were invited there to play with them and they were going to host us and you know, they were really cool people. How how do they how do they give how do they give money to Is there a bands band together site? So we're working that out right Actually, this is all happening today. We woke up this morning. And we're like, we're going to do this. Okay. So, yeah, because he, mes- he messaged us overnight and uh, told us more about his situation. And we were like, well, how can we help? I know there's something we can do here. Well, there's so. a way to send them money directly. Yeah. It's to an IBAN. It's a little complicated. It's an IBAN number. Let's, so it's like a, yeah. Sorry, why don't you guys, when you figure that out, since this show comes out on Friday, like e- email me this stuff and I'll put it in the text of the podcast and talk about it in the intro and the outro. Awesome. In, okay, a, cool. in a clear yeah. way that doesn't that doesn't send out any confusion but that's awesome that you're okay, doing exactly. that i also saw that that there was like some some way you were giving five dollars from your merch to ukraine was that right 
Uh, no, that might not be us. Um, we're just doing like, <laughs> uh, we probably, we are going to do a raffle. We are going to do a raffle. Damn it, Johnny. Um, no, but we are going to raffle off some of the really high dollar stuff that Carly makes some of her, um, change stitch patches. And we thought about maybe even like some piece of gear or something from the band itself. And maybe some custom, um, ghost wolves, hysteric glamor, um, clothing or stuff like that. Yeah. Some but, of the high dollar stuff. Like, we, go, ahead. go ahead. Well, just what we're <laughs> offering is, um, so normally when we first launched the campaign, you know, for the new record, if you pre-ordered the vinyl, then you got to hear the 20th songs and pick your top 10, you know, that whole thing. Well, for the bands band together, we're offering that to anybody who donates money to you, the, the campaign for Ukraine. Oh, awesome. So you don't have to pre-order the record anymore. You know, if you want to donate to this campaign, you know, pay what you will. And then that's what we're offering. You get to hear the 20 tracks and email us your, your top 10 favorites. And if you already did that with us, then you can have any music from us. Just email us. We'll send you digital downloads, whatever download you want. Yeah. We'll give you all of our catalog. We don't really care. <laughs> we just want, it's not about our music. It's about just getting, it's about using the network of people that we've built right all around the world. And then all the networks of people that we know to try to get money to some people that are on the ground right now doing good in that place. So, yeah. Um, let, let, that's and, the idea. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Did all of that, that merch stuff and, and your clothing and stuff like get you guys through the pandemic of like 2020? Was that really helpful to like? Yeah, definitely. Way? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. The online stuff has been great. Uh, we did a few different special things throughout the pandemic and um, yeah, people who have subscribed to us on Bandcamp help us, helped us record the record and helped us, you know, have the time to do some of that stuff. And then also, you know, some different seven inch limited series, lathe cut things that we did and, you know, the clothing and all sorts of stuff. You know, we just, we've stayed busy just trying to create and get it out there. And we're thankful to everybody who has um, supported us through. It's throughout. amazing how supportive people became during that time. Like, yes. Yes. I don't know if you guys yeah. did live streams, but at least like the first couple of months of live streams, I was like, Jesus, why was I ever even going anywhere to play gigs? I know. <laughs> like I could throw on a pair of pants and throw my phone up and sing in here. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to get dressed. Yeah, yeah okay. totally. Yeah. <laughs> we didn't get into the live streams, streams as much because of the sound. You know, it'd be hard to capture our sound in that setting. Right, You know, right. We don't really have the, a way to, to do that. Um, but we... We were happy to see that so many of our friends were able to, yeah, you know, buy like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm in a this band, Skyrocks, like a seven person band, and we started doing them, and oh, wow, that was like a sonic undertaking. Those are like yeah, <laughs> four and a half yeah. hour yeah. sound checks, and like it was wow, wow. yeah, it was fucking yeah, crazy. Totally. <laughs> yeah, that would be hard. And still, then you realize That's everyone's probably just listening on their phone and the kick drum. No matter how long you spent trying to make it sound like tough, it was still like a yeah. <laughs> you know? Damn it! <laughs> yeah, that's um. We just decided not to even try. <laughs> yeah, we did do a bit. We did some special videos where people could buy tickets, but we like pre-produced them. Yeah, we did a right. ticketed event. Where so was that was fun, and that was kind of our way videos. of maintaining control over all that without having to go live. I know a few people that did that and those things ended up being really cool. Yeah, it was great. We had people sending us videos of them watching like with popcorn and wine and right. stuff at home on their big screen, you know, like if it kind of like a pay-per-view yeah. kind of vibe. That was really, yeah, we need to do that again. Um, but we also want people to get out and if they're comfortable, go to shows too, you know, Yeah, because uh, that's the real love right there for us. But um, yeah, it, it was really interesting to see what we could do, you know, with the cards we were dealt the last couple of years. I know everybody had to do that. So it was pretty fast. Someone's going to write a book on it someday. Yeah. You know, what did the musicians of the world do? Why don't you write it? Weren't you guys, Shit. Were, <laughs> were you guys in yeah. that, uh, in the, uh, in that Ismael Quintanilla book? 
Um, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, he's about? the photographer. Yeah, yeah. I know oh, him. Yeah. We know him. We met him. Um, no, but he did take a photo of us at one point. But I yeah. don't. I haven't seen that book. What's that about? It's. No, a, I heard about that book. Yeah, that looked really cool. He went around and like shot photos of people through their window, and I think he started oh. like in April of twenty. He started pretty early on because I mean, he did mine like in April or May of twenty twenty. And, and was that in the Chronicle? Some of those? Yeah, yeah. I saw they some... were advertising it. There, or there, there was a I story so. about yeah, it. There was yeah. a story. And then yeah, I think he gave cool. the proceeds to Ham or something when he when he put it out. Sweet. David Brendan Hall did a photo of us like that, too. Yeah. He did. He was going around taking, like, pandemic portraits. Um, oh, that's but... where I saw you guys. Okay. Yeah, okay. we were yeah. on our porch. Uh, and then also we did a video with um, Jorge. He He – formerly worked at KTX and he did a like a Take socially away. distanced video with us where we played. Oh, cool. Which was cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, people were doing what they had to. It was really great to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was weird. Uh, let me ask you this. Yeah. But there's people like, obviously you said you missed playing and stuff like that, but there's, there's people that came out of it. Like l- last year, like I'm, I don't have to do as much as I did before. Like I was really running myself ragged for no reason. And then the other half of the people were like, dude, I'm starting five new bands. I'm playing every night. I'm going on tour. I'm going to, you know what I mean? Yeah. How, how did you guys come out of it? Definitely the latter. Yeah. Like ready to go. <laughs> we, we probably actually invented like four other side project bands that we haven't announced yet. <laughs> uh, there's 10 tape reels under my 388 right now on the desk that have music. I haven't even transferred to the computer. <laughs> I mean, look at us. We got eight music videos that are in the works right now. 20 songs that are, <laughs> can't even fit on a vinyl. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it did in terms of touring, it did make us kind of think about the time cost of that versus like other ways to reach people, uh-huh. which has been really interesting. And it's actually funny because it's stuff we always like talked about driving around like, God, we're in this car all day today. What else could we be doing right now? You know, um, but then you get to the show and it's all worth it. Um, right. So I think it's going to it's going to like hone our um, our marketing skills maybe i don't know we're not we don't like to think like that too much but you kind of have to you know well, how are we reaching thing. people and that's the thing i feel like um the game has changed digitally like over the course of the last couple of years where people really almost need to be hyperactive on social media in order to even be seen in the logarithm or however you know you want to look at it but it's just not really i don't know that's just <laughs> a lot to take on you know some yeah. people have that ability and, and you know like or time yeah and some don't some people that I, I have friends and they they have a groove like i'll go to a thing like I, i've gone to i've gone to a couple of really big things and i've been a part of them and like played them and i get home and i'm oh fuck i forgot this my camera was in my pocket the whole i was just excited to see people but I know yeah. I have friends of mine that like are always like doing it and it's not like terribly forced. They've just worked it into the groove of their day. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's like we're uh, evolving as people or I don't know, or devolving, devolving. Too, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would really call I mean, it evolving. I <laughs> yeah, I know. That's the wrong word. We're changing for and it'll be, we don't know if it'll be for the better or the worse. Um, but it is it for us. It's like we look at it like we have our own TV studio now in our house. Yeah, exactly. And we can we can broadcast from there. I know a lot of people are doing that, but we also need to get out and be seen and play shows. And that's really where the strongest connections have happened for us uh, as a band. So and we've never taken the leap to be like live on Instagram constantly or a bunch of I mean, we we post on there, but, you know, or on TikTok or wherever all these other places you can be now. Um, we haven't, you know, jumped into any of that yet, you know, and I don't know if we will or not, because we also need time to actually work on the art and work on the videos themselves and work on the recording. And I mean, there's only so many hours in the day. I mean, she probably had like at least 30 hours of editing in that Devil's Vine video. Sure. On top of the shooting. I mean, it was just 
days and 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 days of work. So please watch it. So please yeah. watch it. Watch <laughs> it, people. There's a whole um, section in your at the ghostwolves.com that's videos and you can that's on there and I'm sure uh, the end of it all. Do you know what day that's dropping? Or do you not know yet? Next Tuesday. Okay, so what date is that? By the time this comes out, yeah. it'll be out. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, wait. No, this will come out when? Next, Next Friday. Friday. Okay, yeah, it'll be out by then. Great. Yeah. So a week from today. A week from today, baby. Uh, yeah, That's baby. It. So uh, what's the show at the Spider House Ballroom? That is a show we were just asked to do. It's kind of an early thing for folks in Austin who have to work on Mondays and don't want to be up until one with us. Uh, it's a oh, band yeah. called Bird Bird Casino, who we're pals with, and they have some friends that are playing. It's just kind of a cool thing. We haven't played up there in a while, so it should be cool. Uh, yeah, I like that place. Yeah, we love that room. And yeah, I'm just trying to get back in the groove, you know. We've been playing ABGB mostly, like the last few gigs we did. So, well, you know. now we're like on a Sunday roll too. We've got the Continental yeah. on a Sunday with um, Alejandro. <laughs> we got the Sunday at the Spider House, and then I think it's the first or second Sunday in April we're playing again. Yeah, with P Lander Z. Yeah, P Lander Z. You know those guys? Uh-uh. There's. Oh man, P Lander Z. Uh, they are they're a punk band from Austin. They're Japanese guys, and they they wear like. And girl. Oh, and girls too. And they wear like anime costume sort of things. And they're uh, the lead guy, Yellow. He's an artist. You may have seen his art around. He's just crazy. So and they're a festival together. They have it every year. Yeah. It, it had been previously, it had been during South by, and we played it a few years ago. They're amazing. But yeah, it's going to be P Lander Z. I just Check wrote them out. down their name. Yeah. 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 That's April 10th. And they're, yeah, that should be, they're like just one of those bands you just can't stop watching them. No matter what, you're just I can't stop looking at these guys. I don't know why. You're like, what is going <laughs> what on? What is going on? <laughs> really fun. Great for kids, so great fun. for adults. Just yeah. Yeah. Very animated. Um, you know, I bet also like going on tour, sorry to get back to that. I was thinking this just now that it's probably not as bad because you go out together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for you us. miss your dogs. Yes. Oh, they yes. come with us. Oh, they come with us. Unless, we go, unless we're in Europe. Europe. And yeah, yeah, they come with us in the States and definitely miss them when we go to Europe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's going to be hard. Um, it is hard to leave them. But especially since we've been not leaving them the last yeah. few years, it'll be even harder. But. but yeah, you're right. It makes it um, because we both have toured before leaving each other behind. And it, yeah, it makes it hard. Yeah. Hard to leave people behind. So yeah. we're, we're lucky that way. You guys know I got a dog. Uh, Last oh, year, really? last August, yeah, uh, yeah. What kind? She's Aww. I don't know. She's a rescue. A little. She's a cool. mutt. She's a little over a year old. She's not doing uh. anything bad. She's just laying on the couch right now. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, she's fantastic. They uh, they really make your life better. They do. Absolutely. Yeah. They really Every do. day, I'm like on the floor with them, just cuddling and hugging and all that stuff. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They got. They came to our um, our gig at ABGB. On Saturday, and they had like a whole fan club after they were surrounded by love, and they were just giving love. It was a beautiful thing. A who, thing. who watches them while you play? Well, they were just in the van sleeping. Oh, okay. Oh in the man, back. yeah, yeah they have a little spot. She's not in in that at that in that uh, level yet. Of coolness. Is she yeah. a destroyer? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, she's pretty world. destroyed still. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we went through those phases. Yeah, our van has some damage <laughs> from um the early years yeah yeah the one thing we did at the show that um we got everybody involved in is we put a big jar of the wolf hair into a jar and then we got people to cut their hair off and put it in with the wolf hair and we shook it all up and we're gonna release it into the wind and we're gonna release the beast yeah what beast <laughs> The Beast Within. The Beast. Oh, The Beast Within. Okay, because I was like, wait a yes. minute. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> We're just going to let our dogs go. Aww. We're just going to let them go. Releasing well, no, the beast. But the no. wolf hair is going to carry the people hair, hair of the, the people hair into the... It's like mixing your hair with a wolf and yeah. then being in a potion. Carly's doing her witchcraft stuff. So. Yeah, we're going to release the beast. Yeah. Release the beast. Is no, it's the... pretty fun. Is there some kind of book people should read if they want to catch up on some of those witch craft 
things. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of good I books out there. There are. Yeah, I have I have one. It's an almanac. Um, it goes like day by day, what the moon is doing, and um, you know the different times of year, and you know the different energies and essential oils and herbs and stuff that you can use for different stuff throughout the year. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Do you have anxiety? Do I? Yeah. Um. Not really. Really? Luckily. What about you, Johnny? Only if I drink too much coffee. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, maybe that's yeah, what I'm get, doing to myself. Yeah. 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 Got to be careful with the caffeine. I get like three cups in, and then I'm just thinking about everything, and it gets to be overwhelming. Um, but I love coffee so much, Johnny. I can't stop, man. I can't either. That's one thing during the pandemic that upped. I would just drink coffee all day during the. Dur like during yeah. the first few months of 2020, I got into a real bad sort of like, mm. like so bad, yeah. like by like three o'clock, I'd just be completely exhausted. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know yeah. It'll mean? get you. Yeah. Yes. So I'm just crashing hard. I ended hard. up getting off caffeine completely during the pandemic and I haven't picked it back up. <sighs> Thank <yet>. God. Shit. <laughs> so I'm more she drinks into the, coffee, herbal, it's just, the herbal infusions, you know, where you can get different, um, energy or relaxation or something like that through yeah you know just herbal tea yeah so that's what i've been getting into lately mixing my own teas for different things and i like the fun. um the espresso machine yeah helps me dose you know what i mean so i'm not making like a huge pot at one time oh so I have right. A little espresso. right that's my trick so i know i'm only having one espresso and then i can walk away <laughs> Yeah. Until he goes back for another one. Yeah, I know, but there's not like a hot pot of coffee on my counter all day just calling my name. Right. right. right That's right. where I get in trouble. So, <laughs> see, mine's easier because I have a Keurig and and a, on the stove espresso mm. maker. Oh yeah. So nice. And the thing with the on the stove espresso maker is I'll make one in the late afternoon and use the whole thing, and drink it over ice. Oh, it sounds good. Yeah. It sounds glorious. And then I'm sweating. My my upper lip is sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would have anxiety too if I was if I was on that much caffeine for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 Definitely. I'd be shaking and you would be ordering me around and have a million other things going on. <laughs> even even more than I already yeah. do. <laughs> I can do that fine she without gets caffeine. Real intense on coffee. <laughs> real intense. Some people do. Let me ask you this before we uh before we go. Uh yeah, throughout that that whole like lockdown and and having to escape Italy and stuff before before everything got shut down and being locked in together, how did you guys do? As like Johnny and Carly. Well, the thing is, is we have always, you know, since we started the band, we've been together twenty four seven. So it, it wasn't an adjustment for us to be. Oh, I guess that's together. true. Yeah, yeah. Because as as we toured, we've I mean we've been confined to a van, you know, for months at a time, just us. So <laughs> we kind of have worked out a lot of kinks over the years to try to figure out how to get along. <laughs> and uh, so it. <laughs> yeah, we we have tools. <laughs> we have tools right. that we keep. <laughs> like the timeout is really important. We found that's a good one. If we start, because I mean we're both kind of hot headed people. Yeah, I'd say. Like we both exist on a upper frequency, frequency you know, <laughs> like we're not, we're just kind of always going. And I think sometimes those frequencies clash Sure. and then, but the timeout is great. We're just like timeout, get away, leave me alone for 30 minutes. And then we talk about it later. And that's been, um, but we, yeah, we definitely, we're not a perfect, you know, heavenly perfectly thing. I, what am I trying to say? I'm going to get in trouble saying all well, this. You know what I'm saying? It's like timeout is easier said than done in, yeah. in the heat of the moment as right. well. So it's like, that's a good theory. And we really it's try to good, remember yeah. it. What I'm trying to say is we have, we aren't perfect and we definitely fight, but we've just tried to manage it and not let it be destructive. And that's how it's always been, you know, before the pandemic, during the pandemic, through the pandemic, after yeah. the pandemic, it, we're not, we didn't have to readjust for being together all the time. Yeah, I don't think the pandemic really f meant, like, did anything to it. Um, but we've, we're making so many decisions all the time together. Like, every 10 seconds, there's an important decision. So, 
uh, obviously we're going to have a fight about that once in a while, but yeah. How did you do with the pandemic? Were you home with your puppy mostly or no, was I was the, alone yeah. going crazy. I, uh, yeah, <laughs> I've, I, uh, you know, I, I threw myself into the podcast. I did, I did, I did some yeah. zoom songwriting with people. That was fun. Oh, cool. cool. And a lot of zoom hanging out and yeah. watched a lot of TV. Drank a lot of yeah. coffee. Yeah. <laughs> smoked a lot of weed. It sounds like, it sounds nice just talking about it in a way. <laughs> you <know. laughs> well, I mean, it was weird because I was scared. Every, you know, everyone was scared of everything and it was just got real odd. There, uh, mm. uh, I did, yeah. I, you know, I ended up at the end of 2020 for, de- for the month of December. My grandmother got a beach house in Galveston and basically was mm. like, everyone get tested and come down and stay as long as you want. So I moved to oh, Galveston nice. for a month Sweet. <laughs> in 2020. Awesome. And Sweet. that was awesome. Cause I, it was yeah. really nice. Like there'll never be another time I'll, I'll live with my grandma for a month as an adult. That's you know, so yeah. cool. Take her breakfast every day, sit down, shoot the That's shit. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You'll, you'll treasure that forever. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all, cool. we all will, all of us that were there. Um, yeah. So, uh, Devil's Vine, end of it all, singles out now. You're going to be send, putting out more singles as the months come. And then uh, June 3rd, Never Die, your third LP out. Uh, you, you guys don't do a Patreon, do you? No. Uh, no, no, but we okay. do do the Bandcamp. Bandcamp subscribers. Okay. Yeah. So and that's, we have people there. That's just uh, bandcamp.com backslash the ghost wolves. Uh, it's the ghostwolves.bandcamp.com. Okay. Sorry. That's right. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. The Ghost Wolves. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So everyone go there and get involved. Um, you'll have more uh, in the intro and outro. I'll know more about bands band together, which by the way, that's awesome that you guys are doing that. And um, I love, I love these new tunes. Like uh, it seems like there's a, uh, they seem a little more ethereal and dreamy than kind of bombastic and rocking. We didn't really talk about the music that much. Sorry. Thank you. Well, yeah. no, that's okay. Um, yeah, we were able to stretch out having our own home studio um, with the the sound and the the sonic layers and um, complexities, I guess. But um, what we found, though, is going back to the live show with some of these songs, the arrangements are changing to be a little bit more bombastic, as they will. I was be. wondering about that because there is like, especially like just in Devil's Vine, it's like it's a very it's a mood. And it kind of stays mm-hmm. in that sort of groove, which you're like, I wonder how this will translate at like a bar or so at the Continental Club, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, we definitely, we shoot ourselves in the foot with that kind of thing. We have forever where we record it one way and then we just can't do it like that live. We're like, we can't go into a noisy club and do that. So yeah, that's going to be interesting. But let me show you my new guitar that I, um, a friend made me. And oh, yeah. uh, that's what we've been kind of making our new sound with for the live show. Yeah, awesome. but we haven't That's recorded cool. with it yet. I got you. Uh, oh, you're, yeah, there you go. Oh wow! Look what the thing. hell? It's called the Ghost Wolf. Wow, that is awesome. Isn't that cool? And it's kind of like the shape of the wolf head with the nose down here. Are those the the lowest two strings or bass strings? Yep. Yeah, fucking so a, rock and roll dude yeah this this thing is amazing it makes our show super heavy who made yeah. that <laughs> um it's a company called ewol guitars e-w-o-l yeah. but actually since they're from um the netherlands they pronounce it evil guitars yeah but um yeah so it's e-w-o-l if you can see that dude that is awesome hold on hold it up yeah. let me take a picture of that so People can see it. Yeah, we with the. Uh, oh no, the whole guitar. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah, and the guy that made it, Erwin, <clears throat> he um. We played with him when we were in Holland, and he had this awesome guitar. And I was like, "Oh man, like, what's the story of that guitar? That's really cool." It's like, "Oh, I made it. You know, I'm an inventor, and I, you know, mess around with different designs and this and that." And then he saw us play, and he came up to me after. He's like, "Hey, 
I want to make you a guitar. That is so like, Are awesome. Are you serious? Yeah. So we like the first year of the pandemic, we were going back and forth with ideas and sketches and um, how we were going to, you know, how he was going to design it. And then he has like videos of him making it. It's just really cool. I'll send you um, a link, Johnny, so you can see if you want. Uh, yeah, no, I would love to see that. What, what, how does that, what, is there, does it have to have a special pickup for the two bass strings and then like, well, there's different options on it. So you can um, play it with a stereo out cable. And that so, is cool. Uh, and then you can switch it. Like this one is, let's see, mono. So it all goes through just a regular cable. Yeah. Or you can do stereo where the two bass strings would come <laughs> out. So to the bass amp and the other one. That is so also, awesome. Guitar only, bass only, and then a baritone option. Wow. And then this is a phase switch. And then um, over here, there's like a kill switch. So you can get like it just to go on and off. And yeah, yeah. Cool. How exciting. Yeah. Isn't that rad? I know, I know. I'm blown away by she this She gets thing. the coolest stuff, man. It's I can just... And- uh, like we ramped up so because jealous. we only have so many guitars worked up on this thing because it's just a different tuning and different beast. But we ramped up to it and we played like five songs at the end of our show at ABGB with it. And it just brought the next level to the show because <laughs> it was heavy. Yeah. And, and yeah. we're really into it. Yeah. Well, if I can make it to that, I'll probably be able to make it to that Alejandro show, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah. That um, should be really cool. Yeah. I'm yeah, excited. It'd be great to see you. Yeah, it'd be great to see you guys. Uh, congratulations on all this music. And it's really, man, it's fucking great. And I love Thank you. I love all of the new like sensibilities in it and stuff and like those weird drum sounds. Thanks. Everything. Thank yeah, man. Um, I'll put I'll put links to everything on there, and uh, people can see you guys Sunday, March twentieth, at Alejandro Escobedo's uh, South by Southwest party at the Continental Club at two p.m. Sunday, March twenty seventh, six p.m. at the Spider House Ballroom, and uh, go to theghostwolves dot com. Check out their videos, and uh, thanks again for doing the show, you guys. Thanks for having yeah, us, man. Having a good us. one. It's great nice to see you. To you. Uh, yeah, you too. Talking to you. Talk to you later. Bye. All right, that was Carly and Johnny Wolf, the Ghost Wolves. Their new album, Never Die, drops June 3rd, but you can check out their singles, Devil's Vine and End of It All Now, wherever it is you stream and download music. Go to theghostwolves.com for all of your Ghost Wolves needs. See them this Sunday, March 20th at 2 p.m. at Alejandro's South by Southwest Party at the Continental Club. And gang, don't forget when you're out there checking out theghostwolves.com, you can subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you find podcasts. Like it. Give us a rating. Please do it. Come on, man. Get out there. Leave us a rating. Let us know what you think of the show. Subscribe, follow, and rate. Do it. All right? Don't forget uh, Don't forget to, to give to Bands Band Together. I'll put a link to it in the text of this podcast. Uh, theghostwolves.com. Go there and check them out. See them Sunday, uh, March 20th at 2 p.m. at Alejandro's South by Southwest uh, party at the Continental Club. All right, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you on Tuesday with a full wrap-up of, uh, of the week. South by Southwest. Have a great weekend. Let's get down. In the mountains of the mind.